President Trump and the former director of the FBI, James Comey, trade barbs just before Comey's book is released. I'm Wendy Gillette in New York with more on what both men called the other. Bozeman is looking to update its current strategic plan. I'm Adair Spab, and coming up, I'll let you know what the city's priorities are. Good morning, happy Monday, uh, six or 631 I should say here on this uh, Monday, our top national story this half hour. Former FBI Director James Comey revealing more details about his interactions with President Trump. Now this ahead of the release of his new book, A Higher Loyalty, Truth, Lies and Leadership. As Wendy Gillette reports from New York, Mr. Trump, who fired Comey last year, is already firing back. I think he's morally unfit to be president. Ousted FBI Director James Comey blasted President Trump in an exclusive interview with ABC News anchor George Stephanopoulos Sunday night. A person who sees moral equivalence in Charlottesville, who talks about and treats women like they're pieces of meat, that person's not fit to be president of the United States. The interview aired just ahead of the release of Comey's explosive new memoir, A Higher Loyalty. Comey says it's possible the president obstructed justice when he pressured him to drop the bureau's investigation into Michael Flynn, the president's former national security advisor. Was President Trump obstructing justice? Possibly. I mean, it's certainly some evidence of obstruction of justice. Comey, who was leading an investigation into Russian election meddling, was fired by President Trump last May. The president launched a preemptive attack on Comey Sunday, tweeting in part, Slippery James Comey will go down as the worst FBI director in history. Some fellow Republicans piled on. This is just salacious uh, and and all designed to undermine this president, who he has obviously a bone to pick with. Mr. Trump maintains he sacked Comey because of his handling of the investigation into Hillary Clinton's emails. Wendy Gillette, CBS News. Now Comey's book, Higher Loyalty, hits bookstores tomorrow. Meantime, 632, now Matt hits the desk as uh, we get ready to work our way through this uh, Monday. Not bad out there, depends yeah. on where you go. It's uh, actually really nice. I think uh, the wind, at least yeah. initially, is probably our biggest issue. By the afternoon, we're talking rain showers and maybe some snow by the evening, but I don't think a lot of it's going to stick. Yeah. I think that makes a lot of people happy. Temperature-wise, we're into the 40s and low 50s. This is a very mild start to the day. The cloud cover certainly out there. More of a southerly flow, and that should help keep our temperatures at least on the milder side for now. Uh, a good chance that we'll see some afternoon showers east of the divide, west of the divide. The showers start uh, about mid-morning. Looks like that could lead to a little light snow by the evening. We're going to go outside uh, on the Billion Auto Weather patio in the next 10 minutes. We'll talk more about what you can expect coming up in just a few. Thank you, Matt. Now 633 on this Monday, our top local story this half hour. A Bozeman man has been identified as a person, person killed in an avalanche on Saturday. 39-year-old Anthony Saraselli was killed on Saturday after witnesses reported seeing an avalanche off Skyline Run near Saddle Peak that caught at least one person. Gallon County uh, Sheriff's Search and Rescue was dispatched just after 11 o'clock to the area, out of bounds, and just south of Bridger Bowl Ski Area. Search and Rescue volunteers at Bridger Bowl were supported by 25 rescuers, avalanche dogs, and a helicopter. In other news, Bozeman will be updating its strategic plan when commission members meet tonight. MTN's Medeiros Bab takes a look at what the areas of the city will be focusing on over the next couple of years. Over the last month, Bozeman Commission has been asking the community what they would like to see done within the city. All of this input has gone into a proposed update for the current strategic plan. There's no right or wrong answers, but there are just, you know, the, the ultimate choices of what do we do first and how early and how and where do we put our, our early funding. City manager Andrea Surratt says this plan helps city workers decide which tasks to work on first. The plan being brought to the commission lists infrastructure and affordable housing as some of the top priorities due to growth. So we need to do it differently. We need to think about being a city that grows from the from the inside out, not out leaving the hole in the middle. Surratt says affordable housing is an area the city hopes to really focus on in the near future. So it's, it's not about uh, making it just cheaper for everybody to buy a house. It's really about making sure we have a broad uh, variety of, of housing stock and costs that are affordable to some and, um, and, and offer a way for people to live in town versus being out of town. Other areas the city plans on working on are parks, law enforcement, and communication between local citizens and city officials. In Bozeman, Madaris Bab, MTN News.
Now, Medeiros tells us commissioners will vote on the updated strategic plan tonight at 6 during the city commission meeting. In other headlines, an Illinois billionaire is the top donor to political super PACs in the nation so far this election cycle. And as MTN's Mike Dennison reports, these PACs have spent a pile of money promoting Montana Republican U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale. This month, a group called the Restoration PAC began running a TV ad in Montana criticizing Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester and praising Republican candidate Matt Rosendale, the state auditor. In Montana, you have a choice. Someone who fakes Montana values around election time or someone who lives them every day. Matt Rosendale is the real deal. Restoration PAC is a political action committee funded primarily by Illinois shipping supply magnate Richard Uline. It spent about $520,000 to produce and place that ad. But that's not the only ad promoting Rosendale and paid for by a Uline funded super PAC. Since late December, America's PAC has reported spending an additional $700,000 on radio ads in Montana supporting Rosendale. These super PACs operate independently of the candidates. A spokesman for Restoration PAC told MTN News Thursday it's focusing on races to keep the U.S. Senate controlled by Republicans and that it considers Rosendale a solid conservative who has a great opportunity to defeat Tester this fall. Rosendale's campaign echoed those comments saying that national conservative groups and political figures are recognizing that Rosendale is the best candidate to take on and beat Tester. Rosendale is one of four Republicans vying to challenge Tester. The others are Big Sky businessman Troy Downing, former State District Judge Russ Fagg of Billings, and State Senator Al Oshesky of Kalispell. Montana Senate race is expected to attract big money this year, but it's unusual to see such a large outside buy choosing favorites in the primary contest. Uline's PACs are doing the same elsewhere in the country, getting behind Republican candidates in contested primaries in Wisconsin and West Virginia. The Washington Post reported this week that Uline has already spent $20 million this year on federal races, more than any other person. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And just as a reminder, the primary election to choose the Republican U.S. Senate nominee is coming up on June 5th. And the Bozeman Association for Education of Young Children is putting on events all week for the Week of the Young Child. The celebration started on Sunday at Wilson School. There was face painting, bouncy house, games and snacks for the kids. And the event was free and open to the public. Kids even got to take home masks and capes that they made at the carnival. Kate Bryan, also known as Music Kate, is showing kids how to drum at the event. She says it's been a blast to interact with all the different children. This room is full of activities. I mean, they've got kids doing blocks and they've got kids running around in these wonderful capes that they've made. I just love the capes. And uh, anyway, there's just all kinds of activities. Like it's a bouncy house here. Let's, I mean, tear those kids away from that bouncy house, right? <laughs> <laughs> the Week of the Young Child will continue throughout this week with discounts at local restaurants, a movie night, and it all wraps up on Saturday with a child care fair. I should have gotten one of those capes. Good idea, that's yeah. fun. <laughs> Shifting gears a bit, people from all over the state were in Bozeman yesterday to compete in the state powerlifting championships. This is you, Missy. Weightlifters <laughs> of all ages were at the Hilton Garden Inn to test their strength. Some of the events were back squat, deadlift, bench press. Lifters competing in this event could qualify for both regional and nationals. For powerlifter Melissa McGregor from Butte, it's not about the competitive nature, but rather meeting others who share her passion. They're like, how are you? And how are you doing? And this is awesome. And what gym do you lift out of? And, and it's really unusual because you'll see somebody and you'll think, gosh, I wonder if they're strong or what they're good at. And they surprise you. And it's, it's really inspiring to meet um, people from other gyms and other, you know, um, lifting clubs. Now, more than 40 lifters from around the state competed in the powerlifting competition this weekend. Good job by all of them. Mike Hurd. Absolutely true. Oh, meteorologist. Absolutely. Don't mess with them. Lifting those stats takes a lot of yeah, work. Oh, yeah. That's lifting sure. those numbers. How about That's for sure. There we go. Good morning to you. We're so glad that you're here. After a quick break, we recap a big weekend in Missoula for the Concerned Veterans for the America Foundation as they welcome veterans and entrepreneurs to discuss business over the weekend. But first, here's John Dickerson with a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're at the White House with the fallout from former FBI Director James Comey's new book and interview. And Allegiant Air is responding to last night's 60 Minutes report on a history of mechanical trouble. 
Steve Croft is in Studio 57 with more insight into the investigation. See you at 7.